All right, guys. So here I am on my WordPress site. I'm running it locally with Local by Flywheel with Divi already installed as well as the Divi Machine plugin. So if you come here, you can see I've got Divi Machine installed. I've also got advanced custom fields installed. So if you don't have that done yet, go ahead and do that. If you have any confusion about any of this, especially when it comes to our plugins, definitely check out the documentation. Everything is documented in great detail over there. And of course, if you get super stuck, the support team is always here to help you out. Let's take a little bit of a walkthrough. And in this lesson, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be covering some best practices to set up your Divi website and Divi machine for the best possible chances of not running into any issues. You know, Divi updates constantly, WordPress updates constantly. There's always a chance that something might go wrong. And almost always the number one reason something goes wrong it's caching. Now, speaking about some best practices, I'm gonna come over here to the themes. I mean, you look here, you can see that I'm using a Divi Engine child theme. Now, using a child theme is always recommended when working with Divi because it allows you to extend the theme if you're writing some extra code, which you don't need to for this course necessarily, but it's a great way to make your site more modular, more updatable, and just prevents you from running into extra issues. Now, if you do need a child theme, I'll link one in the course notes for this lesson, but um, you can find it also on a blog on divyengine.com forward slash resources and just search child theme, you'll find it right there. The basic settings we need to set up for Divi here to ensure success is I need to go here to Divi, then theme options. Now Divi's got these amazing performance settings that really do help speed up Divi sites, especially things like the dynamic module frame network and all these other dynamic CSS, dynamic JavaScript. But the th reality of it is as you're building a site, a lot of times this will cause issues. So while you're building your Divi site, it is always recommended to disable these dynamic settings. These top four need to say disabled and the rest of them don't really matter so much. If you do run into issues, you can also disable deferring the JavaScript and jQuery. That might solve some other issues. There might be a plugin conflict of some sort. Um, of course, any plugin conflicts with Divi Engine plugins will definitely sort out for you. So I'm gonna save this with these settings disabled. Now, we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna go to the Boulder settings. We're gonna click on Advanced, and here you see static CSS. We're gonna wanna disable that one as well. And I also like to make sure that the product tour is off. Otherwise, every time you add a new page or a template or anything like that, it bugs you with those older lessons on how to use it. And now we're all Divi veterans here, aren't we? So we don't need all that. I am going to disable the classic editor because we are going into the visual world here. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then that is all set. Now also make sure that you don't have any caching plugins activated at the moment. You can always activate them after, but for the time being, you wanna make sure that they're off. If they're here, or you have any listed here, sometimes hosting companies, I know Cloudways installs Breeze by default just this deactivate them or disable them for the time being while you're building your site. Now also, of course, you'll see these listed on the screen now. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have the right amount of resources allocated to your Divi install. So you either need to go edit the php.ini file. So you either need to go edit the php.ini file or the wp-config file to make sure that you've allocated these resources to your Divi install is very important. Divi is a beast, it can do a lot of things, but it does need some resources to make sure your sites don't slow down and tick off your site visitors. Okay, so now if you wanna make sure that your server is stacking up correctly, Divi has a really cool feature built right in where you just go to Divi and you go to Support Center. Now here, it's got a bunch of different system status reports. So I've already disabled my dynamic CSS, the dynamic framework, all that stuff. They do want you to have that on a live site. So you can ignore that for now, but we're gonna look at the full report and here we can see, okay, what PHP version is running? What's the WordPress version? How much memory do we have? All those requirements that I showed you on the screen a moment ago that I'll link in the course notes for this lesson. You'll find that right here and here you can see specifically how your site is stacking up on the server that it's on. This is an easy way to know if you need to change anything. So take note of that. Other than that, guys, we're gonna make sure that Divi plays nice by implementing all of these awesome things 
And in the next steps, we're going to take a look at some time-saving best practices that you can set up with Divi, things like your fonts and color palettes and stuff like that you'll be using to simplify the development process throughout this course project that we're going to be doing. So hang in tight. I'm going to catch you there in a minute.